my gosh. All right. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to episode... 11. 11 of the Rec Report. We had to skip a week. Yeah, well, you know. Things happen. That was a cool vlog, though. Yeah, absolutely. And you guys were out of town, mm -hmm. and now we're back. But anyway, guys, welcome back to Rec Report from RiversedgeCutlery.com. Today we're talking about the boys and their uh, great outdoor adventure they had this past weekend. Mm -hmm talking about some knife news and also our favorite vacation knives. So stick around for all that and way, way more. All right, guys, so tell the people what you got into this past weekend. I think you'd be a little bit better explaining that. Sure, yeah, it was um epic weekend. Really good um, LT Wright, SE Knives, uh, Wazoo Survival Gear, and uh, Griffin Pocket Tools, and was there anybody else? Uh, yeah, Northwest. Northwest Pacific, Pacific. Northwest. Yeah, Pacific Northwest Gear. They make like a wax canvas, but anyway, all these people put together a weekend, and it was an invite only. Um, it was only about total with everybody there, about 50 people. So it was very intimate, very um, educational. They had classes, and basically what it was is to bring. Uh, there were three, different, no, four different manufacturers there, four or five. There were um, maybe four retailers. There were YouTubers, uh, influencers in our industry, and then a few people from the show alone on Discovery Channel. That's sweet. And we did classes. We They showed us, uh, Joe Flowers was there from Condor, and they did classes on how to use their equipment. It was just a grab-and-go type of deal where if you saw something you wanted to use, you take it and you go use it. And the, the, the great part was that manufacturers are right there to tell you how to use it. So um, the really cool part about it was that the, it was like a community um, that came together. We discussed everything from what's going on with social media and our industry um, to the trends, to the people. Um, it was just really, really cool weekend. And it was awesome that they put that together for us. It was cool that they almost had like a mini blade show and then you could go up to the, <laughs> go up to the vendor, say, ooh, that knife's cool, and then go take it into the woods and use it. Exactly. So it, was, it was pretty neat to test things out. Yep. Yeah. So, what was your guys' favorite knife that you got the chance to use? Maybe for the first time, it may already be a knife that you already love, but what was the favorite knife you got to use that weekend? So, something I've been eyeing for a while is the LT Wright uh, Machete. I'm not too sure nice. exactly what they call it, but I've always wanted to try it out, and I finally got to use it on that's some sweet. bamboo there, and worked pretty well. Did it? Yeah, chopped right through the bamboo. Is that the one that's in, um, like, 1075 and has that, at, like, dark acid etch on it? Yeah, I'll have them do it. Yeah, edge. that was sweet. We got to see that when we were up shooting that video with mm -hmm. them. Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. How about you, Mike? Um, kind of a similar story, kind of a funny story. Uh, Joel Flowers from Condor, he had, a, I don't know, about three dozen machetes put out, and he was giving a <laughs> class on them. And he was like, all right, everybody grab something, and we're going across the street to, shut, to cut some uh, bamboo down. So he did that. If the one knife there... That was a 2022 model prototype, not even out. Yeah. Well, I saw it there and I grabbed it. I, I'd never seen it before and it was like cool as heck. So I grab it and I go over to the bamboo and I mean, just right through the bamboo. And I set it down, I'm doing something with Riley. And he, he happens to see that knife. He goes, who took that knife? I'm like, I did. He goes, oh, did you use it? I'm like, yeah. He goes, yeah, we weren't supposed to use that one. Um, so I grabbed that. It was just a very cool machete. Uh, almost like a tanto, but not quite. It was, it was, you'll see it eventually once it comes out. But um, that was cool, and it, it, it cut really nicely. So as far as knives go, that was my favorite uh, <laughs> favorite knife to cut with. Uh, you know, I wasn't supposed to. You guys are always getting into trouble with that kind of stuff. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much the most emblematic thing I've ever heard about Joe Flowers. I feel like his kitchen table is just covered in machetes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you guys, you did some filming down there, didn't you? We did. Yeah. So I haven't. I haven't done a whole lot with it yet. It's That's okay. fun, a ton of footage. You're busy. Um, definitely put some in the record report so you guys can see it. But then there'll also oh, be, yeah, a, that'll be, sweet. There'll be a little video. Got a super cool pocket dump from a guy. His name was Bushcraft Kelso. And 
It was just a, the most wicked pocket dump. It's a totally it separate video. It just kept on video. going on and on. It's like a five, <laughs> five minute pocket dump. And yeah. give, give us an example. What was what was it? Oh my gosh. Yeah. He I just mean, kept pulling I mean, stuff out. Fire starters, nail cutters, <laughs> nail uh, ropes cutters. and tape and knives. Um, first just, aids and just kept on and all that stuff. Oh yeah. That's cool. That's <laughs> it's awesome. funny. This guy, he also, he has a goat. Yeah. And the goat has its own Instagram. And I knew him because of his goat. Bushcraft Sassy. What? And this goat wears a vest and he carries a water bottle. Fire like a therapy starters with goat? him. Uh, yeah, I don't know. But cool goat. But supposedly, awesome. didn't he say something about he can't bring the goat places because it bites people now or yeah. something like that? <laughs> <laughs> so he can't bring it anywhere with him anymore. You're like, hey, never mind. He can't bring it with him everywhere, though. Yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. Like, so he has like a therapy vest or is it like a, it, like it's a, a fishing Molly vest? vest? Oh my god, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah, so he's got sweet. packs on it and, st- and uh, patches and stuff like so that. So you know that you know the uh, the goat's Instagram. Yeah, for so we, can, so we can throw up a picture of yep. <laughs> her, <laughs> him, her. Uh, sassy, I'm sassy, sassy. I think he has three goats actually, but like Bushcraft girl. Sassy is the main one. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. You I mean you gotta have a social presence for your main for your main goat. All right. Other than knives, what was your other favorite piece of gear you got to use during this trip, Ooh. excursion? Adventure. What well, you got one in your pocket. That's Ooh. true. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, we each got uh, some goodie bags yeah, when nice, we were out there, nice goodie and bags. these goodie bags were insane. The bags itself were actually from the Pacific Northwest. Uh, that like wax canvas. Yeah, that wax canvas yeah, stuff. That was nice. So the bag itself was super cool, and inside the bag was all sorts of stuff. And uh, Griffin Pocket Tools, they were there. And they supplied me with a free keychain um, pry bar. And my favorite part about it is it's almost like a giant pocket clip. Yeah. So I put the keys in my pocket and then this sets right on the edge. That's and then sweet. I just sit there. I need my keys, grab the end, pull them out, and then they're there. Cool. So it's nice because you get like a key hanger plus a yeah. multi tool pry bar. Yeah. That's sweet. Titanium? Oh, uh, this one's stainless. Nice. It's titanium one, yep. so. You know, everyone always talks about titanium pry bars. Uh, steel pry bars actually make more sense because <laughs> it's stronger and more durable, but yeah. that's sweet. How about you, Mike? The very simple uh, piece of gear that I saw from uh, Woods Monkey, actually, which is like okay. a sub, sub company of uh, LT Wright. Oh, oh, but oh, they I'm just right. made, it's just little Kydex, simple things with with strategically cut out holes and, and it was good for Molly and stuff like that. Hmm. But what it's made for is you could put these, like I guess elastic bands on it, and you could put this in your bags, in your pocket, in wherever you want. So when you're reaching for something, you just grab this card per se yeah. out. Um, and it's got all whatever, like if it's a whether it's a first aid one or a, you know whatever it might be on there, your your EDC stuff. But you just grab the card, and everything you want is on there instead of digging through a bag. That's so a cool idea. And then they they make it specifically to fit certain bags too. Okay. Like there's a. Um, uh, a special chest rig that they make it for. There's mm-hmm. uh, pocket ones you can just put in your pocket. There's yeah. all sorts of they stuff. They have one made specifically for uh, first responders and search yep. and rescue. And, oh, like an yep. IFAC? Yeah. That yep. yeah. Exactly. So that's I just really thought cool. that was very cool. And that was yeah. another thing that they included in that little goodie bag that we yeah. got. And yep. We had a free one of, the, one of those cards. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to get some B roll of that because that's oh, yeah. it's hard to describe, I'm sure. It is. Yeah. yeah. That's sweet. Yep. So you mentioned that there was a lot of really cool personalities, LT yes. Wright, Joe Flowers, um, people from other retail stores. Who was your favorite person you got to meet for the first time? For the first time? Yeah, or, or you know, who was a, your favorite person you got to hang out with? Yeah, first favorite person I got to hang out with was definitely uh, Craig Cottle. Yeah, me oh, too. Oh, cool. Um, I like him. We've been to a lot of his classes before, yeah. like years and years past, and I haven't seen him in like three or four years. Nice. And it was cool to finally see him again and talk to him and see what's going on. As an adult man, for the first time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's sweet. How about you, Mike? Um, definitely my favorite person was Craig also. I don't see him too often. Um, he's just a good dude. His his uh, Nature Reliance is his class, is his company, uh, and they do classes that, like Riley said, that we've taken from tracking, um, Land navigation, survival, uh, just anything you need for outdoors, he probably teaches it. And he's the guy, he, he actually teaches Navy SEALs, he teaches wow. search and rescue, he does search and forces. rescue. Um, an incredible guy. In fact, you'll see him more, not necessarily him, but his company. Uh, I'm going to work with Craig and definitely try and promote him as best possible because I truly believe in what he does and he's just like an awesome dude. And he's within a few hours of us, right? In about three and a half. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, about three and a half hours south of here, so that's why I feel someone wants yeah. a good weekend, head down there and definitely take a class of his. But um, we'll get some information. And then just, uh, I think I'm most excited about 
meeting the guys from uh, Smoky Mountain and Blade HQ, like we hung out with their um, social media crew yeah. the whole weekend. And super I mean, nice guys, super nice guys. Like always there if you need, if you have any questions. Um, we got their information. We exchanged information. Yeah. We're on a, a Discord server now, so we could all exchange stuff, ask questions. Um, I just good group of guys. You know, I don't know much about the owners of either the company, but I do know that these social media guys. They're on it. They're yeah. very good, intelligent, and um, yeah, they're, they're a good group of guys. So I think that's, you know, like when I think about the weekend, that's kind of the first thing I think about yeah. hanging out with those guys. Um, yeah, good stuff. So it's like professionally and also a little bit recreationally about us weekend, yeah. Yeah. which is awesome. Yeah, and that's a common theme that we talk about here. I think like every other episode is the fact that a lot of the people that you meet in the knife industry are just super nice people yeah. um, and you very rarely run into someone who's kind of a rotten apple but generally everyone that's in kind of this insular hobby super super yeah. good dudes may not remember i should say yeah uh, a couple of people too to mention it like carly fairchild and oh yeah larry roberts both there from alone they were cool. and the other dude from alone too i don't i didn't catch his name but uh they told stories around a campfire one night about what it was like to be on alone and uh just just good people and cool stories yeah. yeah. It was a good time. Carly had a cool idea to start the first fire. It was called Campfire Co op. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to start the first fire there with a giant bow drill. Giant. Oh, so we had this, saw that video. We yeah, had this bow drill. Yeah. <laughs> it took like six people to run this bow drill. And it also took us like an hour and a half to two hours to get this fire going. But we yeah. finally got it. And it was just cool to see that yeah. starting the first fire with this big bow drill. I saw the video today. That yeah. was really, really cool. Yeah, neat stuff. Fun. Um, so you guys also got to meet Taylor. Oh, uh, Taylor team. Martin. Yeah, yeah. he's cool. Yeah. I, I never, I've never met him in person, but he's obviously got, I mean, probably the best knife YouTube channel. Really good. On the cinematic. internet. It, yeah, and just yeah. amazing cinematography. He's a true professional, yeah. and um, I think he does that. Like that's his his yeah. full time, right? Yeah. It is. He's been in it for four is years, sweet. which yeah. is insane. Yep. And that's why we had the big discussion the the second night was about social media and guys like Taylor. That's his livelihood. That's how yeah. he supports his family. And what they're doing to these guys, you know, I don't know how much you guys have heard with SE, We Knives, they, they just kind of dropped them. Yeah. Um, and it's scary because that's our industry and it's such a harmless, good, you know, rooted industry. What? What's going yeah. on? And that, these are things that we seriously have to look into and find out. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's just, it's crazy what people are doing now just for simple EDC stuff. And it's sad when you look at companies like SE and mm -hmm. like we, both two companies that very clearly do not make weapons. Yeah. SE makes tools that are literally for people going outdoors and saving, <laughs> saving your space. life or saving someone else's right. life. And they do that. They're, yeah, I don't exactly. know how much you guys know about uh, Randall Adventure Training. Uh, Riley and I were supposed to take the search and rescue class, oh, yeah. but um, it got canceled. So it, it worked out so we could take this uh, other other uh, weekend. Yeah. But um, Randall, I mean, it's all volunteer based and basically they get a call, hey, we can't find this person. Yeah. We've been searching and they go out and uh, typically they'll find them. Yeah, and they practice yeah. what they preach, yep, making absolutely. tools in the US. Yep. And obviously we in Civivi make just great EDC folders and fixed blades that are just very clearly not weapons also. So it's just sad to yeah. see this happening on, on social media. Um, so with that being said, if you haven't followed our newsletter, I'll put that down in the description <laughs> right. down below. You may you not see know. us anymore. <laughs> yeah, you never know what's gonna happen. Um, yeah. So if you get all your uh, your knife news from Instagram, then kind of find other ways to follow your favorite knife retailers and brands and whatnot out there because you never know what's gonna happen. Yeah. It's a weird world out there. Yep, um, and I do want to figure out, uh, I think it's Shane Adams 90 Okay. on Instagram, is, yeah. something like that. Follow Shane if you're interested in SE at all, um, and you know, try to promote him yeah. too, because now he's trying to do his personal Instagram, just to get his information yep. out there. Yeah, anyone yeah. that we've mentioned today, in today's episode, they'll all be linked down below. That'd be below. perfect, yeah. yeah. So that way, that that way we can get some, uh, get some more support for some awesome people. And, and actually, right, everybody from this past weekend, we will put their links down there. Please support them, at least research them, look at them. Yeah. Um, every single one of them has got a heart and they're great, great people, great companies. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So the uh, the stuff that I was most interested in, I got, obviously I wasn't there, but I, I did get a chance to look at some. And of why weren't you there? there? Because of yeah, my birthday. It is birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Happy now, birthday to Evan. Uh, yeah, I'm, I finally turned uh, 15 years old. So <laughs> I'm almost to driving, but um, yeah. So people might take that seriously. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. Can you see that little stuff? 
I really, really like the Pacific Northwest um, wax canvas stuff that you guys were bringing back. I when I first saw the goodie bag that Mike brought brought in, I was like, man, a smaller, thinner version of that would be an awesome lens case. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh wow, yeah. Yeah, wouldn't that be sweet if you could put a little padding in there because right. it's waterproof and you can yep. cinch it down, but yeah. that would be super, super sweet. So those will also be linked down below. And are we going to get some of those for the store? Absolutely. Okay, yep. cool. Yep, I already talked to them about that. Perfect. So yep. yeah, keep your eye on the site because we're, we, you know, we always like to get more uh, USA made stuff in there. Absolutely. Not too many USA made bags out there. Mm -hmm. No. You know? I know. Um, and this, you were just mentioning they're just a small family owned company. Family owned company. Yep. Um, husband and wife own it. And the people at actually make the bag is, is the wife, the wife's sister, and mother. Those yeah. are the three people that make all the bags. Yeah, that's the kind of Pretty stuff. incredible. That's the kind of stuff we like. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So guys, we're kind of entering in, hopefully, it's 73 degrees outside today. It's getting warm. It's getting nice out. So we're kind of entering in a lot of, the, or we're kind of entering into the season where a lot of people start thinking about their either summer uh, EDC fix or EDC folders, excuse me, or their vacation folders. And uh, you guys, and I guess now me, we're known for taking our tropical vacations yeah. every now and again. So what is your go-to vacation knife? And if you don't have one yet, just in your mind's eye, what do you think would be the ideal vacation knife? So it really just depends on where I'm going. If I'm going to be in the water, yeah. um, I have a Native 5 and LC200N. Nice. That one's super cool. Uh, I just recently got this guy. Um, this is the Delica with the Warren Cliff and S30V and yep. teal. So I typically carry that Spartan, but it's freaking heavy, all titanium sure. with a big, thick blade. Uh, so having an FRN handle, and I really like FRN. So yeah, having an FRN handle, thin profile on the blade, these are nice for thinner pockets and shorts and stuff. I bet that's less than half of the weight of the Spartan. Oh, less. You know, maybe a third, yeah. which is sweet. Yeah. How about you, Mike? Um, probably along the same lines, yeah. you know, maybe something like a bug out, but definitely something with a, a very uh, stain resistant blade. Yeah. Uh, because we are typically in the water, uh, whether we're scuba diving, snorkeling, just hanging out in the water, uh, salt water that is too. Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, definitely anything. I mean, I love carrying a bug out around just because it's so light and uh, universal, but um, yeah, in the water, just something with a light and, and a good blade on yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I, I, the one I took on the previous vacation was a Pacific Salt Two, full serrated. Mm -hmm. That was the old H1 version, um, which is, kind of almost two generations back now because now they have LC200N and then in the future it's going to be magnet cut mm -hmm. which is really cool. Um, your Native 5 Salt is getting replaced with a magnet cut Native 5 Salt. That'll be wow, the first production cool. knife from Spyderco and magnet cut mm -hmm. which is going to be awesome. But um, I think I'm going to switch gears and I haven't held this knife. Oh, actually I have held it. I, we don't, I don't own this knife yet I should say. But Hogue is coming out with a Deca mm -hmm. in Magnacut. That'd be cool. Internals are coated, and then I think the blade was coated as well. With Magnacut, it's really not going to matter. If Spider Coast put in their Salt Series, it must be pretty dang stainless anyway. Yeah. But I think that's going to be a super um, underrated choice for a uh, summer EDC knife. Yeah, definitely. You know, because Magnacut's going to be super stainless. And it's a thin knife. It's pretty light. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. You know, it's it's bug out dimensions essentially. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, these are going to be the like FRN, uh, GFRN kind of handle, like a uh, traditional bug out, not the G10 ones like their yeah. Decas. So it's going to be stupid light, and I cannot wait to get those in the store. Hmm. Yep. So guys, let us know down below what your ideal summer slash vacation uh, folder is, because you know they always think of different stuff than we do. Oh yeah. Better stuff, different stuff. It's always better. Yeah, it's always better. They got more time to think. All right guys, hopping into the knife news for this week. It's kind of a quiet week for knife news, hmm. but we sniffed it out. Um, you know, our research team did, so shout out to the <laughs> research team. You guys are so underappreciated, we love you. First off, a surprise exclusive drop from Knife Center. They released their smooth G10 Manix 2 in crew wear with the black coated blade. Previously, they had done a satin version. I don't know if it was satin or stone wash, but a non coated blade version yeah. of that. But that smooth G10 in crew wear, that was the first exclusive I ever got in the pair of three. Oh, yeah. Yep. Nice. I, I really like that combo. Um, so check those out. They are live now. 
who knows if they're going to be live when this video comes out and I'll throw it up in a description if they're not live anymore, but you know how Spyderco exclusives go. Um, also, I know you guys are all familiar with the CRKT Minimalist. Mm -hmm. uh, they are releasing a beefier spear point version of that. So thicker blade stock, also a stronger blade style than traditional. Hmm, not um, so minimalist anymore. Not so minimalist, <laughs> exactly. And um, just some of the most comfortable handles out there. That's cool, I'll have to get that in hand. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So that's coming out. Um, and last but not least, one of our favorite brands, ProTech and um, Bob Drizula. They won at Blade Show Texas, best production folder out there for the ACTF. Wow, nice. Hmm. Did you ever That's get cool. the chance to, to handle that before they got shipped out? Uh huh. Probably the, probably my favorite ProTech I've ever made. Dang. It's really, really good. Um, great ergos. The first one that came out was that like white paper micarta. Yeah. Can't wait for them to do a, a little bit more of a uh, utilitarian version of that because they've all kind of been show versions yeah. since it's come out. But also, they are in Magna Cut, which is super awesome. Oh, I have held one of those. Yeah. Jake had one. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, you held it at shot. Yeah. Um, I'm excited because it looks as if ProTech is kind of dipping its toes into the Super Steels. Hmm. That would be cool. Yeah, absolutely. So while they might still be holding on to 154 CM with like the Godson sure. and the Godfather, yeah. it looks like every new model is either coming out in 20 CV or, or uh, Magna Cut. Wow, that's impressive. Yeah. That's cool. Big upgrades. So check that out if you haven't already. If you don't know who Bob Trizula is, then uh, definitely fix that. He's one of the legends. Old in, school. Yeah, an absolute legend. Yeah. Uh, some of the greatest designs of all time. Riley, got any knife news for the boys? You want to tell them what you guys did today? Today, uh, we finally got powder coating set up. It's going to be a, another service that we'll offer. That's pretty exciting. Kind of expanding the custom shop once again. Yeah, custom shop is really growing. Yeah. It's, we're going to have a lot of different different uh, coatings and different finishes to offer. Yeah. Vapor Hunter getting, getting set up back mm -hmm. there, yeah. all the different blasting media. Yeah, the glass bead. And yeah. 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 So it's all coming together, guys. It's, it's coming down to the wire, but it's coming together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How about you, Mike? You got any knife news for him? Um, no. It's okay. No. <laughs> guys, that wraps up knife news for the day. <laughs> Should we do a pocket dump real quick? Let's do it. All right. Riley, you start. Oh, you, right. already, you already exposed it. I already it. showed it, yeah. um, but I have the S30V Warncliffe Delica with the teal scales. Pretty cool. I was super glad that this is in teal because I also have the teal uh, Enduro yeah. and the teal Dragonfly. Matches it pretty cool. And Warncliffe is like one of the best user blade shapes in my opinion. Agreed. Sheep's foot is my favorite blade shape. Um, then I've got my keys, AirPods, wallet, and phone. That's about it for me. Perfect. All right. I got some new and some old today. I got the ProTec TR3 in Magna Cut, my first Magna Cut knife, so I'm actually really excited to get some use on this. And um, I've used it a little because a lot of the stuff that had been coming out in Magna Cut before was pretty expensive. And then I also have a huh. little battle, oh, I forgot that camera's pointing at me. Hmm. I have a little, um, is it Battle Horse or Blind Horse now? It's Battle Horse now. It's Battle Horse now. I have a Battle Horse. Fixed blade in 01. This was a gift from Zach Holstein. So shout out Zach and Kelsey Holstein uh, for the birthday gift. I've been carrying it since I got it. So appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. And then I got phone, keys, wallet, AirPods, all that stuff. Nice. Still can't make myself carry a, uh, a flashlight. I know I should. But. Yeah, I, I, I can't get behind it. <laughs> I can't either. get behind it. Yeah. What do you have, Mike? Um, really, not a lot. I've got Vero today. Nice. And Ridge Wallet and a phone and about it perfect yeah guys let us know what's in your pocket today um that sounded I'm, like the commercial what's in your wall what's in your <laughs> what's in your pocket i, I will say though don't give that away we should make that into a real <laughs> <laughs> i will say today i um i'm trying out carrying a pry bar yeah that was like remember that video we did things that we can't get behind during yeah. the dc world pry bar is one of those things i said but i put it on my keychain from the griffin pocket tool I'm gonna try it out. So far, it's actually, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Have you used it at all today? Yes. Um, we used it to pry rubber bushings out of the head of a Honda Civic head thing. There you go. Used it. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Nice. It's a user, baby. Yep. Guys, I'm already jealous of you because when you're watching this, it's a Friday. So enjoy the rest of your weekend. Um, be nice to each other, I guess. Mike, you have any dad advice for him? 
Huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just enjoy life. Have fun. Life's short. It goes fast. Yes, sir. That's it. All right, guys. We'll catch you guys on the next episode of the Record Board from RiversEdgeCutlery.com. Thank you. See you.